Let's see, let's see, let's see. It is October 4th, 2023. It's like 9.15 a.m. Vegas time. Las Vegas, Nevada. <clears throat> so I left back on September 1st. It's now October 4th. And my trip's over. For the most part. I still got to drive home. I'll be making a few slow stops. I'm not going to drive through, obviously. It's like 40 hours of driving plus... I'm not even sure because the time changes or whatever. But <clears throat> I thought that I'd just get some thoughts here before I leave. One, it was really amazing. I met so many amazing people. Um, got a few new numbers, a few new contacts, networked. Really enjoyed the trip. Uh, it's long. I had a couple of stinches. Right when I got to Vegas, I had a couple times I was like, I just want to be home. But then the comedy festival started and my mind switched. I had an absolute blast. I actually stayed. Uh, I was supposed to leave on the 3rd and the comedy festival ended on the 1st. So I've been here a couple extra days playing poker or whatever, which was fun. Resting up. If you can hear, I fought off a cold or I'm fighting off a cold. I think I'm on the other end of it. I was just living off of vitamins, protein shakes, AG1, and uh, emergency. But I think I'm on the other side of it. But I figured I'd give... I'd walk through my experience uh, for anybody who wants to do this emotionally and a couple of things that I learned for a couple of minutes here. So one, it was a long trip. It feels like multiple trips. <clears throat> I can barely remember the Blue Ridge Parkway. I remember kind of a few experiences. And it's funny because they joke around and they're like, it's not about the trip, but the, or it's about the people you meet along, the friends you make along the way. And it really is. So when I think back to the Blue Ridge Parkway, I do remember the views and the hiking and being, but I don't remember like being tired or I have to look at the pictures for the views, but I remember the emotional experiences that I had with a couple of young women that I met, that I hiked and I went swimming with and talked with, uh, some older women that were sitting and watching a sunset that asked me to join them and we sat down and had a chat and watched the sunset over the overlook. Um, so I remember the emotional connections that I had on that trip but the rest of it seems like a blur even though it was beautiful and kind I, I even remember now talking and thinking back talking to one of the people that lives there that she stayed there one of the hotel front desk workers uh, associates that she moved there because of the view and everything and another one that said I've never even gone over to the parkway it was like one exit away and she's never even she's like I'm not outdoorsy um, <clears throat> then in Florida uh, I played poker. I barely even remember the poker. I remember a couple of experiences talking to people. I met comedian uh, Michael Ian Black at one of the tables. He wasn't a huge fan of me. I was talking about guns and firearms, but I don't know what he was going through emotionally. He could have been losing, up, down, uh, whatever. So I don't know. I don't hold it against him. He, seemed, he, he wasn't mean or anything. He just wasn't very talkative with me, so... Uh, which just brings me to the thing like I met a lot of people <clears throat> and I put myself out there and I talk to people and a lot of people probably find me obnoxious uh, loud intrusive uh, whatever, whatever it may be but it doesn't matter because uh, I met a lot of good people that like me and so I gotta weed through those people but it's better than going across the whole entire country or living your whole life and everybody's apathetic towards you because no one gets to know you, you're hiding you yourself, you're being quiet, you're being meek. So you'd rather go up and talk to people and have them be like, uh, yeah, okay, mm -hmm, yeah, and brush you off. I had a couple of bad experiences with some people. Um, and it might not even be about me, it just might be about the fact that they're also going through something so you don't really know. And, uh, you know, I get up, up in your face and I'm talking to you 
you have to have a similar energy and if you don't or you're being swamped or you're emotionally drained or you're tired or whatever it may be I don't I don't know but I don't like everybody <laughs> it's that swingers line with Vince Vaughn hey I don't like everybody certain people don't like me um, but Florida was really great one of the things that I really remember was this soul food vegan restaurant that I went two days in a row called uh, Cray Vegan K-R-A a B E G A N, and they made amazing soul food. The the southern hospitality was amazing. The bartender, she was so sweet. Uh, one of the female cooks came out with the bartender, and they both talked to me. They were so sweet. And then the second time I went, there was a guy singing on stage, doing show show tunes and stuff. Not show tunes, yeah, at a soul food restaurant, doing like Prince, Michael Jackson. Um, made a, a bunch of songs like that. It was really amazing. The food was great. I, I'm going to hopefully make uh, the dirty rice that they made. I want to add that to my my rice regimen during the week because I like to I eat a lot of beans, rice, and seitan and stuff. So I want to make like a barbecue and dirty rice. That was really good. Florida was fun. Austin, another completely different experience. I didn't care for the city. The homeless were all over you. It was dirty. The mothership is well designed club, but it was smaller than I thought. And let me just leave it at that. I got to see Brian Holtzman at Skankfest in Vegas, so it wasn't a wasn't a big deal at uh, the mothership to me. But I immediately got there, was going to Chase to pull out some poker money because I don't like to travel with the money. And immediately met a young woman, exchanged numbers with her. We ended up going out, talking, having a good time. So Austin was friendly and welcoming, and uh, not for, but not for me. But again, when I look back to that, even though I had a bad experience, I actually I won poker in Florida, and then gave it all back and then some at the poker lodge in Austin. I just got destroyed. I couldn't. I just couldn't see anything coming. If I had a big pair, they had a bigger pair, or they sucked out on me. It was just a mess. But I don't even remember the loss of the money. I remember meeting the woman, meeting some other people, talking to the, the travelers and stuff. Everybody was so friendly. Um, and realizing Texas is not the place that I, that I would want to move to personally. Off to New Mexico had an absolute blast I went to Santa Fe to an idol restaurant which is basically it can be Jamaican vegan but it's basically idol is short for vital like vital nutrients and there is some people that make idol with meat this guy was fully vegan he was super cool we chatted for an hour he actually gave me homemade ugly tomatoes and stuff which were great. And then I traded those to a street vendor for some lunch that she was making. Uh, and she wanted the, the tomatoes because she's all in the middle of the desert rather than than cash. So that was great. She made me a little, a little lunch and we talked. And like I said, here I am sitting, huge view of the mountains winding up through New Mexico into Arizona and what I remember is trading tomatoes with that street that uh, Native American street vendor for for food and having a conversation with the woman uh, drove through a couple of the national parks and forests in Arizona it was great got up to the northern uh, north tip in um, the Grand Canyon <clears throat> loved it Excellent experience, great family thing. The people were friendly. I was there solo. It's probably a better trip for family. I don't see myself going back there by myself. I had some great hikes, saw some amazing animals, uh, but the people were pretty much preoccupied with family events, so it wasn't a great place for me solo to, to meet people. Although they had a like a cafe in the morning that served coffee that converted into a bar at night. Uh, I don't really drink, but I went by just to socialize, and it was all couples and families in there. But recommend that for families. But I'll tell you, after that, I went up to Zion National Park, 
besides the the skank fest and meeting people zion was the most amazing hike i met so many people along the way friendly people that you keep running into shaking hands had conversations and i talked to like old people the maintenance man um you know young people uh made some friends along the rivers walking in the narrows uh, when you're up to water, up to your waist, and sometimes up to your chest, going back and forth through this river in the sand, and you're just really woven in. It was three and a half hours out one way, three and a half hours back the other way. Uh, people are in your way, but that that's a trip that I really, really think you should experience. I had a lot of fun there. I met so many amazing people over and over again in the park for the two days that I was there. And then on to Skankfest, and Skankfest is just an amazing, amazing comedy festival for those that are there. The community is great. You just talk to so many people, friendly people. I got numbers, met new people, uh, talked to a lot of the comics, got along with some of them, didn't get along with some of them. I think that, I mean, everybody's just different. So this is my thing for the young people, because I talked to a bunch of young people that were nervous to talk to people at the show like just regular people. They weren't nervous to talk to, they were nervous to talk to the comics, but they were also just, uh, you know, nervous to talk to other other fans that were there. And I mean, I I didn't realize it, but I met one buddy person, they were like, oh, you're a social butterfly, talking to everybody. It's like, well, I, I show up solo, so if you don't talk to somebody, you're just gonna sit there quiet, bugging out. So. I'd rather be the creepy guy that talks to everybody than the creepy guy standing in the corner like that, like that uh, that meme where the guys where they're all dancing and he's just standing in the corner. So I talked to a lot of people, and it ended up working out well because I would say I would say more often than not I make more friends than enemies, and I don't really make any enemies. Just people find me annoying and we don't talk we don't talk anymore. But if you're gonna try and please everybody then you're not gonna be yourself and you're not gonna make any real friends. It was really great. Uh, like I said, I met another kid, we got along well, immediately hit it off or whatever with this guy. We ended up both being Greek. We both end up into like, uh, you know, I'm always lifting, running, climbing mountains. He does uh, extreme like uh, marathons and stuff like that, or has done them. So that was a good connection to make and then I got to meet Top Lobster from the Tower Gang podcast if you don't watch that podcast and you like offensive comedy you should go check out Tower Gang he runs merchengine.com for gas digital and sells all the merch and the tickets and stuff him and I really connected I'm gonna have him do some artwork for me I'll, I'll put a link down to his his stuff if you need any artwork or digital work done for online but it was good and we talked and he literally said yeah He's like, once I started being myself and meeting people, he's like, I started finding my tribe. And it's nice when you find your tribe because you don't feel alone and you don't feel like you're crazy anymore. And you're like, oh, there's people exactly like me, but everybody else is not necessarily brainwashed, but they're trying to fit into this global tribe. And it's just too big because you have to boil it down to the least common denominator and you can't be an individual. So it's similar to me, like the punk scene. Skankfest is very punk or metal. Um, had a had a blast doing some things, a lot of things that I don't want to talk about, some things that I do want to talk about, but the comedians were great, sorry for banging the table, um, had an amazing time, but played some poker, met some more people, but now it's, I'm ready to just go home and settle back in, so let's talk a little bit of philosophy about the situation now that I've kind of given you a quick breakdown of my experience over the past past month and how my lifestyle is set up so I have like some goals and I put those goals down on some paper and I, and I read them every morning on my computer actually not on paper but written down words and then I have some visuals up on a board behind my desk that help me remember some of this stuff but one thing that I want to do is I had been kind of stuck in Massachusetts for the longest time because I had a, a really nice insurance business, but it was focused in territorial in New England. And even though I could expand, if I wanted to move anywhere, I would have to, I could branch out with the same companies, but I would get in small territories. So it took me like a decade to get these huge territories. And if I move, I would start with a slow 
a small territory, I have to grow it back out. So it was kind of, I was kind of stuck. So I wanted mobile, I wanted mobility with the business. So I wasn't tied, tied to a location for my business. So I had a goal of mobile income. So I was gone. How do I wear this? Basically, I set up a business so that while I was gone, I could log in every morning, just check it, make sure that the systems that I created were in place and make income. And I made the same amount of income while I was gone as I did when I was home. Um, and that income is enough. The, what I made in a month in profit returns from my business was enough to for, I don't I don't really I, I I don't need a bunch of stuff and I don't live an extravagant lifestyle it's not really something I want I have an older car that's paid off and stuff I'm not into stuff I like traveling experiencing meeting people maybe comedy shows but most of the time I just lift read and whatever so I don't have a high amount of expenses or whatever but the amount of money that I made was enough at the end of the month I checked the numbers this morning it was a year's worth of uh, expenses that I made while I was gone, not even not even working. I mean, bare minimum expenses. So I have my budget set up. So even though I was getting a little anxiety, it was set up in a manner that it's like, that anxiety is just telling me that the system won't run forever. But the current system that was gone when I wasn't watching is so well fine tuned now that it gave me enough to pay my rent my food, my insurance, um, and like, you know, all, all the, and, you know, all the supplements that I take and everything for one year while I was gone for the month. So it's, so it's a pretty good system. And I just basically wrote down my goal, wrote where I was, and then made a plan of how to get there and set it up. And so I did this last year as well. But when I was gone, I only made like, I made a little bit of profit, but I kind of broke even on what it cost me for the event. So I pay, I spent a little bit more this year. Um, the poker money is separate. I have that in another account. Um, but I stayed in hotels, like classier hotels this year. The Zion one, I stayed right outside the park. That was like 400 and change per night, but it was well worth it to be right in the park, just take some shuttles or whatever. So I spent a little bit more this year, but what I want to say is this was not my lifestyle a long time ago. You can do this really quick. It took me a long time to learn how to create systems and make money. And I'm 48 now and I didn't figure this out till I was about 40. And now that I figured it out, I was like, oh, this is like, I wish I would have known this in my 20s. Kind of set up these systems and these structures rather than working hourly. So how you can utilize this is if you are in a place where you don't want to be, either meditate or imagine or write or whatever it takes to figure out where you would like to be and figure where you are. And just like a GPS system, figure out the roads, techniques, and to get there and the time frame. So I'm about to leave to drive home. And when I punch my address into the phone, it says 37 and change hours to get home. So if I just wanted to drive for two days straight, I wouldn't get home at that time. I got an idea that it's gonna take about 38 hours. The GPS tells me all the locations that I need to drive, the highways and stuff like that. But there's gonna be unseen obstacles. There's gonna be traffic in the way. There's gonna be weather. I'm gonna be tired. Maybe I get sick. I'm gonna be hungry. I'm gonna have expenses. Uh, you know, I could get a flat tire. Hopefully not, knock on wood. So you can create a, a rough plan of where you where you are in life and where you want to be in life and then st structure that plan but know that you might hit traffic know that you might get a flat tire and um, not necessarily plan for failure but have have savings or a system in place for failure and as this happens so I ran into one one obstacle while I was here and it literally came at perfect time so the Ennis Gang Fest, there's this big festival at night and they play music. I mean, after a the, the, the big music performance at the end of the night, people get on stage and there's like karaoke with a live band or whatever, and you say goodbye and everybody kumbaya's and holds hands and stuff. 
And I'm like, it's over. And I was like, for me, it really hit me because it's like, it wasn't just a three or four day event that was over for me. It was a 30 day event that was ending for me. And I woke up the next morning to like 10 emails, <laughs> 10 missed calls and, and 10 text messages um, where I live. Amazon has been returning packages to my house from, from one of the, the online um, sales facilities. And the mailroom was full and in front of my door was full. And they said, this needs to be moved, it's a fire hazard. And I looked at it, it was, there's it like eight packages in front of my, my the door of my house. And there was like another eight in the mailroom. I thought it was like hundreds the way they made it. They made it sound. So I thought I had like 150 packages or something crazy, 200 packages. So I started calling around. I called everybody I know, calling, texting, texting, because they wouldn't, they wouldn't touch them. They said they can't touch them because of insurance. They wouldn't let me pay their maintenance to do it. They wouldn't let anybody in the building. So if I had, so if I got, even if I got somebody there to get in the build, they wouldn't let them in the building. So uh, and I don't didn't give anybody my key, and I said I don't know what I'm going to do. So I just took a deep breath. I got in the shower. I got some water on me. I got into theta state and I just started meditating. And. I was like, all right, what do I know? So I called one of my buddies and he had some stuff going on. We joked around or whatever, just to like uh, ask him some advice and like soundboard off of him. And so then I got off the phone with him and I called a guy in New Hampshire that we both grew up with as I was in kind of a dire need. And he just, I know he doesn't really like me and then to call him for a favor, but I was like at my last, last straw. So then I called a good friend of mine at her her work. She's a business owner, because I know she has a lot of nieces and nephews that are um, like college age. And I was like, oh, I can ask one of the kids that are, that are grown up now. And she's like, oh yeah, yeah, so-and-so lives in Nashua now, right next to him. I'm like, oh, that's like 45 minutes or an hour away. Tell him I'll pay him $500. <laughs> she's like, he's really busy. And I'm like, tell him I'll pay him $500. That'll make him really unbusy really quick. I need him to go to this location. I don't know how I'm gonna get him into the property. But once we get there, we're gonna, he's gonna brainstorm it with me. And then um, I need him to move these packages for me and then drive home and when I get back, I'll, I'll come give him, I'll, I'll come pay him. So the kid immediately calls me, calls me up, I talk to him, great kid, uh, libertarian family, just amazing family, great kids, uh, respectful, uh, communicative, however you say, when they can, commu you know, as they can uh, communicate well and stuff, you know. Um, but calls me up, he gets there in like an hour and a half, I told him not to rush. I, I got him knocking on the doors. He finally, one of the neighbors lets him in the house. Perfect. He goes upstairs. He organizes the packages. He moves the other ones up. He takes pictures. I send the pictures back to him. Uh, kid writes a note for me for the post office, takes care of everything. Only obstacle I had to overcome. And the old me would have gotten frustrated and like not knowing what to do, panicked, probably ignored it, let it piled up, let anything bad happen. And the new me was just like, you always figure it out. So rather than be anxious about the future, you always figure it out. So just sit here and figure out a plan. Point A, point B, point C, point C. Like one thing at a time. So instead of worrying about not being able to solve the problem, what could I do? I could call everybody that I knew. <laughs> and so I called everybody I knew. The plan worked out. Some might say it was God's plan. The plan worked out. I got it fixed. I was back to relaxing. I went back to poker. And uh, when I get back now, I've been looking for an assistant and I couldn't find one that I trusted. So the way I look at it is that issue happened so that I could f find uh, he who will remain nameless, I don't wanna give out the, the kid's name, and have him help me out a couple of times a month, make some good money, and continue going to, to uh, uh, college. So, I guess the, the, the point of that story and the point of all of this is 
when I hit that traffic going home and it doesn't take me 38 hours to get there, expect that, but have some sort of time frame that you're shooting for so you have an idea. And, you know, when I started the business, I could never guess that, that w what happened was going to happen. Or when I left, <coughs> I could never guess what was going to happen. So instead of stressing about it, you just worry about it when it comes because you can live in the present. When you start dwelling on the past, you get depressed. And when you start worrying about the future, you get anxiety. And it's common. So you want to try to stay in the present, but you want to be mindful. Like I, you know, I reflected about my whole trip here, reflected about Skankfest and how I handled myself um, so I can grow and learn, but not dwell on negative things that I made, learn, take it as a lesson so I'm not depressed. And then not worry about the future to the point that I'm anxious, but to plan and be a visionary towards the future without trying to figure out every everything every step of the way. Just be be aware that it's going to happen uh, one one way or another. So now that I have this mobile stuff, I'm trying to set it up even better because I am dependent on a couple of local suppliers in New Hampshire. So when I get back, one thing I'm going to work on is making that more mobile. Uh, I'm going to start working on this podcast here back and forth or this video cast or whatever whatever you want to call it. I prefer to call it a video cast because pod is for iPod and this has nothing to do with Apple, although it'll probably be on the app. So this video cast that I'm going to do with the help from you, get some artwork, really get it going, upload these videos, hopefully build a community here, make some more networking and more friends and treat the experience of creating this content similar to my trip and similar to navigation where I'll set some goals, figure out how to get there. If I'm not getting there, change some systems, research some stuff, build it, figure out certain obstacles as they come along, meet some people that I like and work with them, find out that some people hate me. I had a half joke, half truth tweet that I put out that got, you know, for me it was a lot. It was almost 200K impressions overnight. And it's hard to tell how many are bots and how many trolls and how many are real. So it got lots of likes and some people agreed with me, some didn't. But there's a lot of negativity on it because people don't understand the situation of what was going on. And I had a typo in it where I said I instead of it. And so they were calling me a narcissist. But, you know, I didn't want to edit it because once you get people emotional, you might as well use the emotions for, for Twitter. But I got a plan when I get back. I'm going to be working with a couple of accounts to on X to build their accounts in the hopes that I can build my account and help more people with um, philosophy and strategies. And then I think I'm going to start rebooting Dave Wright, the capitalist as well, and talk a little bit more about some business strategies and crypto DeFi strategies, true, true DeFi, um, not, not dApps and stuff. Um, but the journey home begins and I expect now that I know, you know, I know thyself pretty well, as I expect, as I start to go home, um, my mindset will change. So I'm technically still kind of calm in a vacation mode. When I get home, I won't really be anxiety, but I'll be a little bit nostalgic for the trip. Similar to when I left, it took like three days to get into vacation mode, four days. A couple of times along the way, I kind of snapped out of it and got back. But now when I get back, I have to unpack, wrap, get back to the daily grind, waking up, working out, uh, you know, doing work, setting up systems, videotaping stuff uh, on a daily basis, posting it, and just restructure my life. And, and to 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 know your not to know thyself that that's going to take time too it's going to be a new chemical and emotional journey when i get home because it's not going to be as exciting to recognize that that change is not depression it's contentment so i'm going to go from every day is an exciting journey out in the world to Every day is a, a peaceful, contentful regiment at home. And to recognize the chemicals that that's going to release in my brain so that I don't experience that as 
something negative but something positive that I'm going from you know almost like living a redlined life like in your car to just sitting in traffic on, in, or just sitting on the highway in cruise control just watching the view it's not that my life won't be exciting but like you know it, it your state the your base state should be calm or I should be whatever you want I suggest that you find calmness and contentment as your as your baseline it's not necessarily boredom but if you're looking to be happy and joyful all the time and you look at those as a baseline then whenever you're content you're going to consider it sad and whenever you get sad you're going to get it can consider it like spiral depression so get a really good grasp of your emotions and where you're at and what things are are, are supposed to be um in in your life and understand yourself everybody's going to be a little bit different i'm lucky enough that i'm on caffeine <laughs> but some people have gone on to pharmaceuticals and stuff which changes these chemicals in your body sometimes permanently and you can't get off them and then you, you're having difficulty realizing who you are anymore because it's not you. You've changed yourself to something else. So whoever you are, if you can figure out who you are, that makes it a lot easier for you. And then um, just like anything else, map yourself out. Some people might need to journal it. Some people might need to write it down. Some you can just internal it and remember it. Figure out where your baseline are, where your starting points are. So you can tell if you move one way towards depression or towards anxiety or towards happiness or towards joy or towards being tired or, t or being too rested so you're getting anxious like where you're not getting enough exercise. Start figuring and mapping these things out for yourself. Um, and then realize that it's also a, that's also a journey too. So if your starting point is you don't you know your emotions very well, and you put and you want to get to your emotions and learn them you know and think about how long you haven't known your emotions for say that's a decade um it could take up to a decade for you to learn your emotions you know there's ways to speed that up by working on it and how many hours it would take uh, you know like i'm driving home but if i use the tool like flying I could get there even quicker. So if you don't know your emotions you're trying to get to and you, and you want a speed course in it, you can start digesting or asking questions to people like myself who know, start reading books, digesting books, working on it every day, journaling, make it your main priority if it's if it's if your life is being destroyed. And then you know, you're on a red line from point A of not noticing emotions to your destination of knowing your emotions if you make that your main main focus and you can do that in all stretches similar to health so you know with your uh, experiences and personal experiences you can speed that up in particular ways because it's within um you know like a fourth dimension which you can manipulate but with your body you're in the physical realm if you're unhealthy and you have actual physical chemicals being released and you have addictions to food and drugs and bad sleep hygiene habits and stuff like that and maybe you're in a negative environment either where you live or where you work and you have to change those things those physical things have a real physical time frame so even though you can go from driving a car cross country to driving a flying a plane cross country to doing a red line cross country to like a private jet that just non-stop and there's different speeds they're still held to a reality so they can only go so fast you can't snap your fingers and go from point a to point b there's even though you're using different vehicles to get there that change change the time and strategies there's still a physical physical element to how long it will change so if you need to lose 100 pounds in a healthy manner um, there's going to be strategies to get you there from point A to point B, and some will be faster than others, and some will be healthier than others, and some will be safer than others, and some will be dangerous than others. But it's gonna take a, uh, not necessarily predetermined, 
but a determined by reality time frame because you have actual reality factors that are pushing against you. So write it down and be realistic about your goals as well. So don't just say, be precise but realistic. Don't just say, I wanna lose weight. But you might wanna say, okay, I want to lose 100 pounds. And then you figure out how many pounds you think you can safely lose a month and say that's eight pounds a month. So you take a hundred and divide it by eight and you know, it's going to be over a year that it's going to take you to lose that hundred pounds. So this will give you a realistic time frame. And if you weigh yourself, say once a month, and you are two, you're 300 pounds, and then you weigh yourself next month and you're 305 pounds, you're like, okay, I'm not on the right track. I'm supposed to be down eight pounds, but I'm up five. So I need a new strategy. I gotta reset the, the GPS to my destination. I gotta do more research. I gotta do more work. And it's just a very simple strategy of creating, creating a, a system, working the system, checking your system to see if it's working and then moving forward with your system. So, all right, I gotta call the bellhop to bring my stuff down. Uh, housekeeping's coming around or whatever, so I need to set some other stuff up here, but hopefully this was helpful to you. We're about 36 minutes in and I gotta start, start my journey home. So, all right, take care.